And welcome everybody to the Halos in the Infield uh, inaugural uh, guest podcast. We are joined here by Ty and Sam Buttry. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank you for the time. How are you guys? Good. You? <laughs> right, go ahead. Um, we're great. We are loving life right now. It's a little bit chaotic. Actually, it's a lot of bit chaotic, but. Um, <laughs> It's kind of planned that way. Sam and I have a lot of things that we've purposely put on our plate to uh, figure out. Um, I, you know, I don't really know how this whole business world and entrepreneur world that we're jumping into is something that I know both of us have always been a big fan of, and um, it's it's different, but it's fun. It, it's you know, you get to you get to be your own boss. You get to make your own rules. You get to figure out life. Um, you know, it's it's stressful and it's chaotic. You guys, if I showed you the house right now, you probably would. Please see. don't. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> it's, yeah. So I'd it's um. So upset. You know, it's it's good. It's good. It's it's also you know, there's some mixed emotions with you know seeing um, Angel Stadium full right now with fans and everything, and I, I think it's full capacity right now. I just saw that the other day, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you know, it's there's some mixed emotions, but honestly, um, it's it's going really, really well. I, 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 I'm not going to lie to you guys. We're having a fun time being with each other and hanging out. You know what, man? That's all that matters. I, I was going to allude to it at the end, but uh, mental health is such an important thing. So maybe I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit because it's something I wanted to bring up near the end. But, um, you know, we, we look up to a lot of athletes or, you know, people, like celebrities, really anybody who's in the limelight, and people just kind of assume they're happy. You know, and then we have some extreme circumstances like, uh, you know, Robin Williams or, Junior Seau, where all of a sudden we're like, you mean they weren't happy? They were dealing with other stuff? So I was actually really happy. Uh, you know, obviously my words mean nothing to you, but I was just really happy when I saw that somebody was looking out for them and their own, then they were looking out for everyone else. Because at the end of the day, all you could really do is worry about you and your family's happiness. So, you know, kudos for that, man. Well said. Well said. No, I, I completely agree with that. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that statement, 100%. Yeah, I think um, – oh, go ahead. No, no, you talk, go. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people get caught up in the, the the money aspect or whatever like that, and they just assume athletes are rich or, or athletes are, have it made, and uh, you know because they see them on the field, they see them on TV, but they don't know the half of it when it comes to all the things they have to deal with. So again, I agree with Fernando too. I mean, uh, it's it's good to see how things played out for you and in, in, in what you had to go through. No, I mean, you guys both said it. I mean, it's. Um... It's crazy. Like the more, you know, the more time I spend away from baseball, the more time Sam and I are sitting here doing our life. I mean, we both will sit there randomly, you know, nights and be like, you know, do you miss it? Like, do you, miss, you know, and, and we both say like there's aspects we miss and, you know, we miss the camaraderie. We miss the team. We miss the, the wins. Yeah. Um, miss the, the babies. Yeah. Sam misses the bait, the, the wives, you know, the kids and everything. She's a, <laughs> she's a big kids person. And, but like you get down to like that stuff's all great, but you know you look at the time that you're spent away from being with your family. Um, you know you look at the time and the years that, in my opinion, was a sacrifice. I know that may be an unpopular opinion for other athletes around the game, but um, you, th there's just things that I think as a young kid we are told, you know. This is what we should do. This is how we should do it. You know, if you're a big, strong kid, you automatically are kind of categorized into sports. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's kind of your reality. And you don't really ever – not. it's not that you don't have a say. It's just that's kind of how the world is. And over COVID, I started to do a lot of self-reflection. And Sam and I, you know, we spent a lot of time in the RV and, um, <laughs> you know, spent 10 we months saw. in a – yeah, yeah, we we did some crazy <laughs> stuff in there, man. Not like weird stuff, just crazy stuff. But like, yeah, yeah. we, uh, you know, three hundred square foot steel box, traveling around the country, and realizing that we could be happy with just being with each other, and you know, the cats, too. the cats, and it's like, what do we really like? You know, what do we really love in life? And that's when we really started kind of narrowing on like, okay, like. Baseball is an unbelievable experience. It's given me so much. I have nothing negative to speak about the game and the kids that are loving the sport. I just, for me, there's some other things that I want to pursue. And, um, you know, I'm 28 years old and, you know, another 30 years, I'll be 60. And it's like, I got another window 
to kind of achieve. And Sam and I have a window to achieve what we want. And that's kind of where, you know, we want to go with. And along. Yeah, answer. I'm totally there. No, no, yeah. no, I get it. I get it. I mean, I'm fortunate enough. I mean, I'm only 24, but I'm fortunate enough to the age of 21, man, I got a chance to live my dream. And, you know, unfortunately it wasn't what it was cracked up to be growing up. I wanted to be an animal trainer at SeaWorld and I got to accomplish it. And sometimes I to be a vet. it's just, was that? I wanted to be a vet. Well, well there you go. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you accomplish your dream and it's, it feels empty, you know, and you just think to yourself, maybe there's more to it. You know, now I have a family and now I'm doing a lot more to help them out and, now, actually, I have the opportunity to uh, be part of a small company that's now grown bigger, and now we're a national company, and I'm second in command, and I'm high up, and, I, and you know, I'm loving it. We, we get to be part of something as a family. So I think that's I've mentioned, so I don't know if you guys have ever seen it before, but I mentioned that I'll be moving to St. Pete in the foreseeable future, just to know when. Yeah, so, I remember um, that, yeah. We'll give you some friends here, so yeah. that's good to know. That's cool, that's really cool. We'll have to meet good, up. Good. Um, yeah, no, I mean, if you guys ever plan on getting a dog, I, I, I do miss dog training. So if that's ever something, if not, I also train cats. So. <laughs> that's, uh... Are you shitting me? Good luck. No, good luck I, did, training. I did the Pets Rule show. If you guys, the Pets Rule yeah, show. Yeah. So. So, okay. <laughs> that was me. Oh, I'm going to have some tricks. Well, that's actually kind of something that you want to get into is like, you know, once we kind of get these little businesses and these ideas that we have, up and off the ground, you know, nonprofits is something that Sam and I are really passionate about. Um, we're actually planning something in St. Croix right now that we haven't really announced or launched just because it's kind of a fluid plan. And Sam and I have been working really hard, but we want to start like, you know, a cat sanctuary, animal rescue, dog, you know, dog sanctuary. Mm -hmm. um, my fiance would freak out. She'd awesome. yeah. In the backyard, hopefully. That's where I want it. Yeah, we may have to there expand, but yeah. So. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, whenever that happens, let us know and we'll help any way we can. We'll help, uh, you know, if I'm there in person, I, I don't mind volunteering or, you know, just for right now, words, whatever we got to do, man, we'll help. Yeah. For sure. Thank you, Fernando. I appreciate that. No problem. So uh, let's get started. So uh, Ty's fortunate enough to give us his time, as is Sam, to talk about their experience in the minor leagues. Uh, Ty's been pretty adamant on his Instagram page that life in the minors might not be what people are cracked, say it's cracked up to be. Sam was the same way when she was doing her behind the lights content, which hopefully is either going to come back or be reincarnated in some capacity, but that's up to her. Um, but uh, yeah, people think life in the minors is super glamorous. So I've been fortunate enough to interview a lot of players. I know a lot of major league players and uh, they'll all tell you that, Hey, you know, it's not all that great. So Ty is nice enough to go ahead and uh, share some of his experiences with us. So are you guys okay with getting started? Yeah. I mean, do you want to, do you want to go first? Hey, you got it. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I've been, I've definitely, you know, I've been talking about it pretty adamantly, like you said, on my page. And to me, um, there wasn't really like, there wasn't like a big master plan to get this going. This wasn't like a vendetta I had. This wasn't an agenda. To me, it's just kind of calling bullshit, you know, when there's bullshit. It's like, yep. let's, let's, you know, uh, I think the guy, the guy's name was uh, Ryan Pinet. Pineda, he's uh, doing a real estate show. He actually played in the minor leagues, and I was watching his page, and he talked about the minor league pay, and, like, it just – I've heard it for so many years, man, about the minor league pay and this and that, and I'm just – I thought to myself, I'm like, at what point, you know, a job where you're considered to be part of that 1% skill set. You know, you get drafted, you know, you go to a D1 college or you get drafted out of high school. You know, when you get drafted or you go to this D1 program or D2 program or whatever, you get drafted. You're a professional. And you're part of now this elite skill set that is ultimately going to hopefully kind of like, you know, the goal would be to get into the MLB. So like you start in this elite skill set and then you're getting into the 1% MLB is now the 1% of the 1%. But, like, to me, it's it, it's not even about, like, you know, there's so many there's so many counter arguments about, well, this is what, um, you know, these players choose this. If they didn't want it, they could leave it. You know, there's other pay inequalities out there. There's the WNBA. Um, you know, what about teachers? What about this? It's like, listen, I'm not I, – I, yes, 100%. Like, there is – issues going on around the world i'm not i'm not arguing that i'm not trying to make this like a political stance i'm literally just trying to call bullshit out and it's like 
these guys sacrificed their whole entire life from the time they were five, six years old to play into the MLB. And then they reach that goal where they get drafted. But not every kid when they're six, seven years old knows the intricacies of what happens when you get drafted. You know, you're not really aware that a team can technically have 13 years of control over you once you sign that deal. You know, you're not really aware that you're making, you know, what is it? It's four dollars an hour. No, two. I thought it's like it, it's. I think an upgrade. It also year. depends where you are. Yeah. Yeah, and so like year. you know, and that's kind of like how I've how I look at the situation. It's like I can't sit here and tell you like you know, there's been court cases that have gone on. I'm just saying it's like you look at what these teams have, the money that they have, and then you sit there and you kind of like you try to understand. You know, where is like, what is the player bringing? The player and the prospects bringing so much value. You know, these minor league organizations are bringing so much. They're getting so much value from that player. Yeah. Absolutely. They're making, you know, the DMs, the field operators, the concessions person, they're all, everybody at that stadium is making more money than the minor league yeah. player. You know, just the sad. sacrifices that people take on with a wife or kids, yeah. you know. And everyone's like, yeah, but don't they get a signing bonus? 100%. I was very fortunate enough to have a nice signing bonus. I was very fortunate enough to have a family where I could live in and stay with rent. But guess what? There was 40 rounds, and then it got cut down a little bit. But after the fifth round, you may be signed for, you know, five, ten thousand dollars dollars $10,000. It's like, That's not- dude. It's That's tw- rent. <laughs> yeah, like, it's 20. Yeah, it's rent. <laughs> it's 2021. Like, inflation's going up, like. That's not going to cut it for most people. And then the, the counter argument is like, well, if you don't like it, play better. Well, how are you supposed to play better? The way to play better is to practice. So in order to practice, you have to work out in the offseason. But if you can't afford your life and your family in the offseason, what are you supposed to do? And it's just like, man, you, like you see what I'm saying? Like I could go down this forever. But like, oh, no, no, absolutely. Well, I have a question real quick for you, Ty. Um, the NFL does a, a program to where when a rookie's draft class is, is uh, drafted, they go through a seminar like, hey, how, here's how life's going to be. They try to break it down for them, try to give you options and things like that. Was that done for you or any other ball player? Was, was there anybody that came across and said, hey, it's going to be hard, it's going to be like this? Or were you just thrown into it without knowing much uh, because of how young you were and how the process works? So when I was in high school, there's absolutely no facts or anything being, there's no light being shed on that situation whatsoever. Um, There's, you know, you, you may get like a cool area scout that comes in and says, Hey, you know, I I mean, I remember the pirates organization, they sat and gave us pirate city and they gave us a DVD to watch. Okay. And pirate city was like this thing. That's like, you are so lucky to be a part of pirate city. And it's like, you get to Pirate City, it's a dorm situation. You can't leave. You can't do anything. You're stuck there. You're living with, like, six other guys in the room. It's like, dude, like, stop stop lying. Like, it's not it's not like that. And it, obviously, like, the Red, Sox, the Red Sox, in my opinion, they did a good job. Um, they had new facilities. But it's like, dude, like, you have prospects. Like, you have guys that can help you win the World Series. Why would you not want to take care of that prospect as much as you could? I agree. And in my opinion, I didn't even play, obviously. I'm just a wife, but sitting back You've been from there through it all, though. That's important. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. yeah. She's been from, it all. from my perspective, mm-hmm. it's, it's like they're not asking for to be rich, right? Like the minor league guys, they're not asking to be rich. They're just asking for, like, <laughs> like a normal salary. Yeah. I mean, like, hello, yeah. what about, like, just minimum wage? Like, they would even accept minimum wage, but yet they're a skill set that's 1%, but they're being paid less than like minimum wage it's, which it, it's, it's mind blowing it's, not, mind like, blowing. it's not like you know minor league players are talking about i want a hundred thousand dollars i want sixty thousand no like <laughs> yeah. maybe maybe we start at twenty five thousand maybe we go up from right. there like maybe yeah but no I mean, we're, we're, at, we're at 12 bucks we're, we're um so like what i was going to ask was so um you know how like what i think last year or prior to last year they were going to cut 40 minor league organizations right and the thought process was, okay, we're going to cut all these minor league programs, but we're going to, uh, you know, have more fair pay. And that was kind of the compromise, right? And that right. didn't happen. We Correct. got rid of so many, you know, dreams that could have happened for a lot of these kids that want the opportunity. Not only that, but the guys who are still in, you know, low A are still making 
a non-livable wage. I mean, even like a teacher's salary, something. Yeah. Yeah, dude, no, that was the thing is I heard from a couple of guys like, yeah, man, they're going to upgrade pay. We cut down the teams. And then like, I think the pay was like maybe a hundred dollars more a month. It's like, yeah. that, and that's, that's kind of, yeah, like that's kind of the manipulation I was talking about. Like, that's like, they sit there, you know, they throw a tiny little carrot out. Mm. The media jumps on it and says, oh, okay. They increase it. Like, dude, like, come on, man. Like, really? Like, that's, like there's so much there's money. so much money in, in that so organization much. there's so much money that they have it's like just pay the guys something worthwhile man like it does like they're part of the one percent they've sacrificed their whole life just like give them give them something that's like something. decent you know? absolutely and then you look at the food it's like the food sucks Oof. the housing half the time these guys are on their own like yeah the like dude like i i, I could but you know what like people it's kind of taboo to talk about it because it's like it's the grind, but it's like, dude, I get it, man. We're, we're I get gonna it. get we're gonna get to the specifics. Don't worry, don't worry. But but see, like um, a lot of times, like baseball is so glamorized, and they don't look at what happens when you're in the minors. You have to work your way up. Uh, I think a lot of a lot of things, like uh, again, I'll go back to football. It's glorified. Um, you know, they're, they're college kids want to get paid too, and you kind of see the same uh, argument there. You know, because they're making millions upon millions for these colleges. So it's mm -hmm. sort of the same thing as the minor leaguers, like you're saying, the one percent that are working their ass off that are going to be the future of the franchise. They should be taken care of, and even those that could be you never know aren't taken care of until they if they or when they make the majors and it sucks because that part's not ever re uh, reported on you never hear about it so like a, yeah. so a, a player like yourself a uh, former player and your wife getting on here is a good way to educate those that don't know the whole story because this is stuff that we're hearing too for the first time that we we knew it wasn't fair but we didn't know it wasn't this fair you know what i mean like this is fair yeah in the struggle like with you guys being married and everything a lot of people forget about that too i mean there's families involved here there's wives involved you know maybe she had to get a job i don't know your as full story at the time you know like uh to to keep you guys afloat and that could be super super stressful because there she is supporting you trying to follow your dream and she's it's part of her dream now and then if if things don't work out you know it could be cause more problems you know and because you got you're not getting compensated enough yeah well honestly todd like that's actually funny you say that because i think like three or four nights ago sam and i we were talking and like i was like babe like you know think about all those years that you sat there you know in support of my career you know you went to college i didn't you have the degree you're she's actually 10 times smarter than i am like i i promise you like she's a genius compared to me and like she put her time in she went through her career mm -hmm. and she said she spent you know weekends and days supporting her husband and being there because he's got the grindy job and he you know mm -hmm. it's such a it, it takes a family to kind of support a minor league player you know, village, some, really. yeah like some guys can do it on their own cool other guys they need a family need a strong support system and like i sit there and i'm like man like what if we like what if i would have supported your career out of college like what if you would have gone out and like done your thing and like you would have just let me do my thing but like honestly guys like the reason i got to the mlb was because of this one like Absolutely. there was that like late nights when i was sitting there bitching or complaining or whatever like yeah i talked to my family but like the one that was there from like through it all was sam and like she sacrificed technically like kind of her career and that like dream she had to support me to get me to <clears throat> this you know, pedestal of being an mlb player and it's like i'm not going to sit here and say anything you know negative about my experience in the mlb because you know it's my own personal decisions, but I'm like, man, like the amount of sacrifices that it takes. And then at the end of the day, it's like, you could still not make it to the yeah. end. You could still not could make still it not or like manipulation can happen. Politics happen. Mm -hmm. And it's like, damn, like you, you got $12,000 to hang your hat on. Like, yeah, you, you know, you get insurance. You, you, if you were lucky, you know, or fortunate, you get your signing bonus, yeah, but like, there's no, what's the pen, the pension sucks. Like the minor league pension sucks. There's no minor yeah. league union. Like, it's supposed to be the MLPA, but there really is no, like, minor league union. Like, should be. Yeah, like, there's just, it's it's a crapshoot. Like, do your thing and next guy up. It's like, 
what about the guy that just spent the last 20 years sacrificing his life to make it to the MLB? But like, yeah, sure. Maybe he's not skillful enough. Cool. Like I get it. That's why the MLB is so hard to get to, but like, come on, man, $12,000. Like it's not that hard. Yeah. And then I guess from like the wife's perspective w- would be like, you know, thankfully Ty did have a signing bonus that, you know, we still had to budget and things like that, but where like I could get a job to bring in income just to have at least some income because, you know, the minor league <laughs> income was a joke, but you know, there's people out there that get hardly a signing bonus. Then, you know, the wives maybe get a degree or have a dream and want to live that out. Mm-hmm. And one, it doesn't pay enough, or two, it's away from their husband. Yeah. And so maybe their dream doesn't pay enough. So then they have to sacrifice that dream and go get a job to pay the bills, which, you know, is a realistic part of life. But then <laughs> most likely jobs that require or like that, like pay enough for you to support your family is away from your husband. So now you're away from your husband. And then I can't even imagine having kids. I mean, I ran into so many girls in the minor leagues where like, nope. I was like, let me be the nanny. Like, Nope. for nothing yeah. because i couldn't imagine that can't, like I can't imagine that you can't even afford it now i gotta go get a job but now i still have kids they can't freaking watch the kids they're on the road half of the month i mean <laughs> all the time yeah i can't even i mean it's you know a lot of people like a lot of the wives have to still live literally at home with their parents go get a job have their parents that are hopefully retired watch the kids while they go to work to pay the bill. Like, I mean, I mean, it's, it's under you get $12,000 a year. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a, money. but yeah. you don't get any money for the off season either. That's. Oh yeah. That's, yeah. That's like, yeah. No money. In out your pocket or train somewhere. And if you so don't like it. Some... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, let me ask no, you no, something no, specifically. Just... So uh, oh. to... uh, I was going to ask. So uh, one of the worst things in the minors is the travel. Traveling for any career period is grueling. I mean, I'm gone almost half a month. So I can only imagine, you know, what it's like. But, you know, I'm flying on an airplane. I can only imagine what it's like to take a bus and be gone all the time. You know, 12, 13-hour bus rides. So maybe do you want to talk about traveling in the minor leagues, especially maybe the lower minors? And then maybe Sam can go ahead and, you know, maybe get the perspective of what it's like for your husband to be gone, let alone gone so uncomfortably because, you know, everything comes with it. And, you know, and that's kind of like, I'll never sit here and I'll never bitch or complain about the process, you know, the things that we have, the physical things that we have to do for the minor leagues, because that's ultimately like any job, you know, any job you have to grind, you have to work hard. There's situations that suck. Um, yeah. You know, I, I definitely think flying, there's teams that do fly and that's way more convenient. Um, there's teams, you know, that only have one bus, the Red Sox kind of updated it and they started having two buses, which was nice. I know that's a big thing teams are doing is they're getting one more bus. Like oh. the, fact, the fact that like the last six they took years. It's a good someone's salary though. Right. Like yeah. the, the <laughs> fact that we had one bus up until this point, And like I was on one bus probably up until double A and it's like, oh, we got two buses. Like, l- like I said, like I could get down a tangent on that, but like, yeah, like the travel sucks. You get in late, you know, you're doing – you're leaving after games, you get 30, you know, maybe 30 minutes, not even 15 minutes to see your wife and kids. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not sitting there fighting that battle because unfortunately there's 142 games in the minor leagues or now it's a little bit less. There's things out of your control. And like, that's ultimately what they preach is like control what you can control. But it's like, listen, for these things, for the food, for the travel, for all of this stuff that we are trying to do, let's kind of make it up on the back end to maybe give like a decent salary so that the wife and kids and everyone can be a little bit more supported when the husband's gone on the road. And it's like, that's kind of what I'm trying to say. It's like, I'm not going to sit here and, you know, bitch about the travel because it's just, it is what it is. There's, you know, state to state, you know, region to region, you, you got to get there somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many games, there's so many days, but it's like, dude, twelve thousand dollars like come on man then there's another (laughs) fun part if you travel on the road in the minor leagues as a wife uh you can't stay in that hotel so then you're expected to pay out of pocket for Mm. your own hotel off of twelve thousand to visit your husband yeah that's fun yeah it's like we have to stay with the team hotel we're grown-ass men um you have to kind of 
sneak it to her. Yeah, like, there's so many. You're not even supposed to be able to see your wife on the road. Like, there's so many times where I'd just be like, Sam, like, I'm, like I'm not going to tell the team. I'm just going to go stay here. Like, yeah, we would, like, like what are we doing? Like, like, you're my wife. Probably and, shouldn't even expose yeah, it. I'm a girl. Like, and, like, I want to hang out with you. <laughs> Yeah. Like button up where like it's two guys per room, so then you find a way where it's like, all right, this guy's wife isn't in town, so he's my roommate, so he'll go stay with him because they're both <laughs> single for the weekend. So then we'll have the room to our. I mean, like, <laughs> and like there's a crazy. there's a whole liability thing yeah. that goes with that. It's like, it's like, dude, like, I want to see my wife. Treat us, yeah, we're, yeah, we're grown men, but we're not. But we don't get paid like grown men. We get paid like we're in summer camp. It's like, yeah, what are we doing here? You know. Yeah, you're actually. Uh, I think my kid gets more in allowance. Go ahead. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Honestly, he probably does. And I was gonna say that the way they're describing it sounds like during lockdown COVID for the NBA. You know how they couldn't see. Your, <laughs> <laughs> but that's normal time. You know what I mean? So that's 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 pretty. Oh, yeah. crazy. That's kind uh-huh. of on my mind right now. And then also, like I wanted to say real quick, getting back to Sam uh, about the overall wife and and you know trying to to uh, you know how they were adamant about not having kids during this time. I mean, with what they're describing right now, how could you have a family and how could Ty be anywhere close to his, his children if you guys had children yeah. and have a rapport in the most important time of their lives if you have the schedule you do and getting paid the way you guys are getting paid? It, it's sad. It is. Uh, you know, and I think, like, the benefit is the kid getting to see their dad on the field and, you know – see their dad as a professional baseball player i'm sure that's honestly i can't speak to it but from watching it you know from friends and wives powerful. that's very powerful and getting the kid you know watching their dad say they worked all these years to achieve this one thing i think that i guess makes up for it but i think that's why you know all these gaps are there is because that is so powerful that a lot of things get overlooked yeah so yeah, like there's so many things that get overlooked <laughs> like it's it, it is powerful you know the, the kids do get to see them but like the overall message i mean and covid was such man it, i mean we've never experienced anything like this and any you know this is the first time and so that's where you know i want to give slack um to this being like it, it was just a shit show man like even and like i don't really speak much about the mlb because i i left the mlb it's not my spot to sit there and bash them or do you know I can speak on the minor leagues, man, because I spent six years <laughs> there. Like, I, I, was, yeah. I got two and a half years. Like, I did really well for two years. I did kind of shitty for the last year. Like, I don't really want to sit here and, like, talk on something. I wasn't a veteran. Like, I respect those guys so much, what they have to do, the sacrifices to be a 10- to 15-year veteran. Like, I got so much respect on that. And so, like, you know, it's it sucks that, unfortunately, like, yeah, like, the, the wives and the family, they were treated like an outcast during that. And that's unfortunate, but like, at what, you know, w- what do you do? Like, I mean, it's, it just, it, it's stupid, but like, we're going to get away from that. And that's why it's like, I'm sitting here talking about the minor leagues because it's like, Oh, we're going to go on to another year like this. Oh, we're going to go on to another year. Yeah. 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 Oh, we're going to another year. Oh, we're going to go on to another like, year. All right. It's gotcha. mind blowing yeah. that like, it's still the way that it is. Yeah. It really is. It's mind blowing. Um, one of the things that I hear people have the biggest complaint about is the per diem situation. So when you're in the majors, they give you like up a you hundred know, dollars a day, you know, if, if not more. That's mm-hmm. what it was in 2008. It was a hundred dollars for people who've interviewed in the past. But in the minors, they give you about twenty dollars a day when you're the road team. And from my understanding, most of that money you have to pay back, right? Because for the team spread or whatever. Uh, yeah, like you know, <laughs> it was a hundred dollars a day in the big leagues. And then when the new, but you don't need the money. Let's be honest. You know, at least not as much. As yeah, like you know, money's a, money's a little bit easier. And then there was an adjustment where you end up getting twenty dollars a day, and the dues were paid for. So you didn't like a lot of that per diem money is you give to the club because these clubbies are these clubbies work their ass off, man. Like they're in there, you know, you know, five a.m. to two o'clock in the morning, repeat for. I mean, clubbies work their absolute ass off, but it's like in the minor leagues. You are 100% expected to pay dues still, but that per diem of $20 a day you get that's supposed to be for food, hmm, so let's think about it. You're getting $12,000 average a year, and then you get $20 a day on the road, but then dues are like $10 a day, so the food that you're supposed to be getting provided by the team, you're actually paying for that food, and let's not even say that the food is actually kind of shitty, so you're paying for shitty food, 
So the per diem of twenty dollars a day that you get, you can just throw it out the window. It's negative. Like it's it's negative. Oh. So the per diem means nothing in the minor leagues. Yeah, no, that's just baffling to me. I mean, you know, you you I go to a you know Inland Empire sixty sixers game. And, you know, uh, my son, you know, is six, so he's starting to get into baseball. So, you know, he likes going there, you know, having a good time. And, you know, like, I, I, I call my dad and tell him, like, oh, you know, I talked to this guy, this guy, this guy. And I just always tell my dad, like, can you imagine that guy's probably eating, you know, uh, bologna sandwiches? And, like, if that, that's yeah. probably, like, his filet mignon. Literally. Like, I saw – um, there was an Instagram thing. I saw the Baltimore Orioles player – um. He's getting like average of like eight hundred dollars every two weeks, and I'm sure you know maybe it was a guy that didn't sign for two, three, four, five million dollars. Um, you know, he maybe signed for twenty k, one thousand. Like that's the thing. Like one thousand dollars signing bonus. That's like that's a very common signing bonus. Like here's your thousand bucks. Here's your opportunity. It's like <laughs> dude, like the gap, man. Like just like just drop it down yeah. to like ten rounds. Like drop it down to ten rounds. You know. Maybe we have way too many rounds. Like, I want to give every player an opportunity. But, like, dude, if we're having 30, 40 rounds and you're paying people <sighs> money, like, maybe that's the problem. Like, I'm not – like, I don't know. I'm not savvy enough, on, you know, to sit there and yeah, say you were that, a fourth rounder. <laughs> I, was, I was lucky, man. Like, I was yeah. – like, I was a high school bonus baby. Like, I got – I had – and, like, that's, that's the thing I regret. It's like, dude, I should have – you know, I got scared to admit it when I got into the big leagues. Like, I got shallow with that. Like, you know, there were so many guys and so many of my buddies that were complaining, you know, and I talked about salary. And it's like I never had that perspective. And, like, I just was like, oh, you should play harder. And, like, now I have the perspective. I'm like, oh, shit, okay, I see. Yeah, this is messed up. Did uh, – if you don't mind me asking, I know how much you got on your signing bonus just because, you know, obviously, you know, I mean, the information is out there. I'm not going to share yeah, it unless you are. One, one, but million. <laughs> yeah, one point three million. Yeah, so um, as a fourth rounder, I would say that's pretty decent. You know, like you said, you're yep. fortunate. Would you yeah. have re if you could redo that situation? Would you redo it? You know, maybe would you guys buy the RV a little earlier? Uh, in what way do you mean redo it? Well, you know, if you could, if you had the chance to hit the reset button on that, obviously not where you are in life now, but if you could at least relive yeah. that portion of your life, would you would you you know one hundred percent take that deal just to maybe restructure that or? Yeah, hundred percent, dude, hundred yeah. percent. Like that, and that's the thing. Like, I'm not trying to sit here and like, you know, be like this person, like this, this, this own example. Like, nah, man. Like, if you get the money out of high school, like if if it's life changing money, and you are, like I said, gifted enough, skilled enough, fortunate enough to where the teams are going to give you that much money, then yeah, like if that's your thing, like if that's what you want to do, it's a personal decision. Right. I personally wanted. Uh, in my opinion, that was life-changing money for me. That for was anyone. money that I could forego yeah. my college education and, and do it. But like, and, and that's the thing. It's like, I'm not sitting there like, man, bonus babies, like something that that's like the truth. It's like, I'm sitting here. I'm not trying to get on my high horse. And like, I sit there and I say, you know, I was guilty of not shedding light on this when I was in the big leagues. You know, I should have talked about this. I was doing things that, um, you, you know, you just don't really consider when you go through that grind. It's such an amazing moment to get to the MLB. There's so many years and there's so many emotions that you're in the MLB now. You're not in the minor leagues. Like, and that's where it's like, I'm not trying to fight that battle. I'm not trying to piss off anybody in the show. I'm not like, I'm not trying to piss it off. I, I just think that there's so much money in the MLB organization and in this company that you can diversify some funds. You can find something to pay minor league players, your prospects, guys that have spent their whole year, their whole life sacrificing time, family, kids to reach this goal. Like, because that's the thing. It's like a 35 year old kid or a 35 year old adult. I'm still a kid. I'm 28 years old. It's like, we don't have like high school kids, man. Like, they don't have money to fall back on if they don't have that signing bonus. Like they don't have it. They don't have education. Like they don't have life experiences. They don't have corporate experiences. So you see a lot of players get into coaching. I'm not knocking coaching. I'm just like, you know, where's the, oh, yeah. where's like the financial literacy classes throughout? Like what, where's the leadership? Where is the, uh, 
you know, courses that players can sign up for if they want, you know, let, let's teach life lessons to these minor league players. If we're going to rip out their finances, you know, and say, Hey, this is, this is your situation. If you don't like it, play better. And that's just what, like I said, I call bullshit. <laughs> and I guess like, you know, we're not sitting here complaining about our situation. And I think that's something that like, even on like Ty's <laughs> Instagram and things like that, you know, obviously there's going to be, be people like for and against whatever anyone says and so I think like the con to like I guess ties like mission on you know fighting for minor league pay is like but bro like you got money mm -hmm. we're not sitting here complaining about our situation and I think that's the situation is it's like there's nobody that's in a stable financial situation that's vouching for the people right. that aren't right in a stable financial situation and I think that's kind of like where we stand and like why we're here talking and fighting for the minor league guys is because we've been through it. We've seen it. You know, we were fortunate enough to be in our situation and it, it was still hard. Yeah. Yep. With the money that we had, it was still freaking hard. So and then look it just blows my mind. Yeah. Like I would sit by these wives in the stands that were way less fortunate than what we were. And I, and I would complain, and it's like I didn't even have room to complain. Yeah, like we so had no like, perspective. It's like, what are we complaining about, And I about, think, like, honestly? that's where Ty and I stand is it's like we want to vouch for the people that, like, aren't vouching. Well, as, as, as you guys struggled through your situation, obviously every situation is different, like you guys have said, but the fact that you guys still care about the players that are going through this, the families that are going through this is admirable on your side. And, and are Absolutely. there players – in your position or other players, former players, current players that are trying to take up this same fight or at least it, it put the word out about what's going on and then trying to advocate some change? Yeah. The, um, Slade Heathcott was actually um, – he was a player in the Yankees organization. He's a really cool guy that I've actually gotten to know um, over the last year. Your social um, Yeah, really like – wholesome guy that's you know doing a lot of good things with his life and nonprofit organization he's big into being an entrepreneur um he actually is working with um he's the operations he's the director of operations at mtb underscore org and it's a nonprofit <laughs> organization and i'm literally looking at their ID right now <laughs> so i'm laughing <laughs> yeah no like i'm because i'm this is actually like a very like he's doing way more than i am like he's he's been fighting this battle Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to like get my stuff together before I like go in full steam and like attack it with them. But it's a, you know, literally organization is we empower every ball player the opportunity to live a better life during and after their careers. And it's stand within MILB. And I just respect that, you know, to the, to the maximum. Mm. But, yeah, no, that's, it, it's definitely something like, that people like, need to be aware of. The guys, like that's, that's one guy. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like, that's, yeah, it starts like, with I, one guy. It it does. Yeah. Like he was the like I know there's some other maybe guys doing it, but like it's not like there's an army out there. And we only have I just saw they only have 3,400 followers. Yeah, like it's like, it's this is what is, happens. I mean, it's like, more it's than just, what I have, but like yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. like a, a Matt Antonelli uh, who I interviewed in the past was a 2008 first round pick for the Padres, and I know he always posts his experiences and stuff like that too. Uh, so actually, uh, the next question I want to ask was based off something he told me. So I, I kind of want to ask some horror stories that you saw, Ty. And by that, I mean, uh, Matt told me that there was guys who would cook uh, ramen noodles in their bathtub and get in trouble for it. He told me that guys would use their air conditioning units to, to uh, refrigerate chicken. Just these are things people do to live. Mm. How many people go to a bait to a game and they're like, oh yeah, that top prospect, number one prospect, you know, he's probably eating ramen noodles from his bathtub. Uh, <laughs> this is my favorite part about the minor leagues. I can yeah, like <laughs> I can tell you, uh probably nobody like everyone goes, all the fans go there and assume that minor league players are rich. Sam actually did a really funny reel on her page about like I remember. What, yeah, like what people <laughs> think it is and what it actually is, and like yeah, like it's, you know, guys are cooking raw chicken in their little, Oof. you know, stove pans in the hotel, and then they get in trouble for that cooking they got food. For Christmas. Yeah, cooking <laughs> for food in the hotel, and then it's, um, you know, there's just, I mean, dude, it's like there's so much shit. Like, uh, I had a, I walked into a crappy hotel in Lowe in Tri City when I was with the Red Sox, and I walked into the hotel. 
or the the motel it was. The curtains were ripped open. Yep. There was a condom, a used condom. This is the story I was going to tell. On the smoke then. detector, <laughs> there was a blaring red light going through the window. We got in at like two a.m. We had a day game. The water faucet wouldn't stop dripping. But wait, because the and hotel- there was mold. Oh yeah, uh, well there's mold. The curtains were ripped off, and there was mold. There was yeah. There was mold everywhere. <laughs> that, that, was, that was a mold. The mold's actually the mold's actually not bad. I got used to the mold. Yeah, like Ty was like, oh, I forgot about the mold. But it's like <laughs> maybe for like just maybe, the other day, for yeah. maybe like I don't know, maybe a couple thousand bucks from a billion dollar organization, billion dollar organization, yeah, yeah. Yep. maybe a couple thousand more dollars. You get to put you, you get to put your prospects into a better area where they get sleep and they can go to bed and they can wake up and they can feel rejuvenated and they get to go to the hotel breakfast and they don't have to For walk a, they don't have to walk across yeah. to the gas station and get the cheese or the apple danish and like I'm just saying like it's not I get it we're trying to cut costs like I know like everyone's cutting costs like trust me but like yeah. there is a very there is like a very there's a fine line between you know line, like there's a fine yeah. line. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can say as a, you know, as a fan, I, personally, I don't like the way Artie Randall's handled the situation lately, but that's just me. I, I, there, a lot more can be done, man. But like, like I said, man, it's not just one person. So the fact that you're willing to take on the fight is uh, really important, and I commend you for it. I appreciate we both that. Are you putting the word yeah. out, both of you, that this can uh, evoke some change, that more people can – can hear the message and be like, yeah, these players, you know, they're just like us. And, you know, because I mean, a lot of people look at uh, ball players or, or sports figures and think that they're on another level. But when you think about it, you know, they have the same kind of problems we have just, you know, different circumstances and things like that. But then when you hear these stories, you're like, damn, we have it a lot better than they do. And it's unfortunate. And yeah. they shouldn't be treated that way, especially being young adults growing into a life that maybe they could have went to college, maybe they could have taken a different career path, but they're right. supposed to follow their dreams. And right. why waste the, the most prime years of your life and and not get a benefit or, or benefit from it or receive some sort of benefits in between and be treated the way that they are? So I, I, I'm with Fernando here. Keep up the fight and hopefully more people get uh, go along and, and may, invoke some change because... It's sad how this has gone. Well, Todd, appreciate you saying thank that, you. man. Fernando, honestly, thank you guys for saying that. I wish it's easy for me now to say all the things I'm saying mm-hmm. when I'm post MLB career. Um, I wish I would have had the stones to say it more when I was there. Um, I was I was young. It what is what it is. Caught up in the game. I got caught up in the game. I got caught up in not biting the hand that feeds you. Um, I regret it, but at the same time, like you said, man, it's time for change. It's, never it's too like. Late. Dude, it's 2021, yeah. man. Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure this salary has been around for like the last. Oh, oh no, it's actually even. It was way cheaper than that. But like, it's 2021. And the average salary is twelve thousand. One more thing I want like, to say, real quick, is that a lot of people love to say, like, especially to Ty, like, if you're fighting for this, then like, you chose this, like, go get another job. But regardless, no matter yeah, what no, job you pick, twelve thousand dollars. That's right. that's a high school. Yeah. <laughs> Like, so, like, I don't care that you chose this. The problem is, is that this it's is not right. Job that exists. Yes. For yeah. Yeah. Out of it's, not, yeah, it. it's not right. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just not right. Oh, like, God. I get it. I chose it. But, like, but give, me, still. give me 20K. Give me 22K. Shit. If, like, we'll, if, ha- we'll handshake if, deal right now for 21,000. At uh, least that's a that's double the salary almost. Like, come on, man. Mm. Yeah. So, closing question here. So, um, Obviously, everyone who watch, who's watching this probably knows how the story uh, ended. Now, I do want to ask, um, how much of your experience in the minor leagues maybe had to do with your decision to go ahead and pursue your own version of happiness? Um, man, I would say... Man, the minor leagues, like, as much as I sit here and say there were things that went wrong to pay, like... When you go through six years of grind like that, you get an appreciation of like, Mm -hmm. you get an appreciation of, of things that, you know, make you happy, you know, things you need and don't need. I'm not important. You know, that I've actually never been asked that question. Yeah. That's a really good one. I've never like, I'm a big reflector. I always sit here like you guys, that's why you see my stories. I like, those are my thoughts. Like those are my reflection points. Like I can't, 
I'm not going to say that it has anything to do yeah. with it, but like, it was ultimately my journey. Like that was such a, you know, those are grind years. You know, I, I pushed through it. We all pushed through it. We got, we got there, we got the reward. And then I got to that point in the MLB. And then I was like, okay, this is cool. This is awesome. Planes, good money, great money, yeah. um, great healthcare, great hotels, everything. I mean, first class, but it's like, why am I not happy? Like, why am, why is there like this lack of fulfillment in life? And it's like, I think the minor leagues gave you perspective to be able the minor to leagues gave me perspective. It. COVID gave me perspective. You gave me perspective. The fans gave me massive amounts of perspective. What's just um, one thing. And then like, that's when I started kind of growing out of like, I've always, I was always not a selfish person, but like, I was always worried about my situation. And then once I kind of realized like my situation and worrying about me, 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 never leads to happiness i'm like i'm done with that man like nope i'm good because that's ultimately why i got i wanted to get to the mlb but that's i wanted money baseball i is. wanted to prove people wrong yeah. well yeah. to some like to some people it's <laughs> some people just love the game like people are gamers like i just like i didn't love the yeah. game ever like i wanted to like show people this is what i can do look at me like I'm this good. And it's like, man, like, and I think you said that on your, like, yeah. I don't know if you call it your farewell letter or whatever, but maybe for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. we'll call it your farewell letter. I think yeah. that's exactly what you said. You talked yeah. about your teacher, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. My teacher, like it pissed me off. Like, it's like, <laughs> who do you, like what? Like, you don't know me at all. Like you have no idea what I can do and what I can't do. So why are you telling a, you know, sixth grader what he can't do like who are you to tell me what i can't do like let you me, haven't even seen me on the field like let one. me make my own destiny yeah. let me fail exactly. let me let me run my head up against the wall and say okay you were right or i'm gonna say or you're wrong and she was right but, you know that's like one of the biggest i think problems with society you know not to get too off track is the fact that like when you're growing up like you know my kid's six man everyone's like you can do anything you want like i want to be a doctor is what he says and people are like yes but as soon as he gets to be in high school people are gonna be like you can't be a doctor you know what I mean? There hits like a certain age where people yeah. just don't care about you and your dreams anymore. It becomes no. about them and what they could do. You yeah. know, what happened to the situation where like, yeah, people, aren't, <laughs> people can't even, you know, just be supportive anymore. Like if a high schooler comes up to me and says, like, oh, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be like, cool, bro. You go do that. Do it. It just, it, it, it like, just gave up. Do it. And, and, and guess what? You may fail. And if you fail, you're going to have so many experiences and lessons learned that you'll learn. Okay. Maybe being a doctor isn't the best idea. Fight or for what maybe you want, being though. the MLB player isn't the best idea. But guess what? You gave it your all. You tried. Yep. You learned on your own. You didn't have another outside perspective that has no clue how you operate telling Tell you, you don't do that. It. Unless, like, just do it, fail, grow, learn, do it again, adapt. fail, grow. Like, just adapt, but don't have an outside factor. Like, be if, the you're, reason if your why kid you wants don't. to be a doctor, hell yeah, I'm going to support yeah. you. I'm going to say, all right, yeah. man. You know, let's read some books. Let's get on YouTube. Let's learn. Let's get into this program. And if he, at the end of the day, he doesn't like it, well, you know what? At least he tried. Yep. Absolutely. And I mean, taken from Ty and, you know, just an average Joe like myself, sometimes you accomplish your goal and it isn't what it's cracked up to be. But I can promise you one thing. The world's always meant to end the way it is at that moment. You mm, know what I mean? A, yep. Sometimes that goal didn't work out, but I can tell you right now in this chair, you know, in the world that my fiance and I have created, this is where we're meant to be in life. And, you know, and I'm sure that's exactly what you can say with Sam, but, you know, it's yep. right where you're supposed to be. Love it. I respect that so much. Me too. And if pickle reviews don't work, then guess what? Adapt. I tried doing pickle reviews. I'll maybe do, it's pasta sauce. Maybe it's pasta sauce. Pasta sauce. So, there you we'll go. Let everyone know what's the deal with these pickle reviews out there. So, oh, man, that's fun. That's good you stuff, just got to fall back, man. If the pickles don't work, the you know, pasta's there. Hey, adapt. Oh, Always geez, adapt. Man. There's something else to I mean, I think Cura Cups. Cura Cups Ooh, is the plan I really C. Like Cura Cups. I really like that one. Cups. We got a Keurig waiting on it too. We may need to like make this not just about pick reviews. We may need to make this like a holistic of reviews, like re things that there's way too many of them, right? And people are getting away with it's like no, like Keurig cups. You got the Dunkin'. That's mine. You got the Dunkin'. You got the Starbucks. You got the cinnamon. You got the vanilla. It's like, dude, <laughs> is it a good Keurig cup or not? Like, give yeah. me the good stuff. But no, I'm, I'm, see, right. I'm getting into my, yeah, like he's already ready for no, pickle you, you guys got me pumped We have up. one in the fridge oh. waiting on him. To oh, we got a good pickle review coming. We're going to see a couple of videos here pretty soon, right? Make sure to check those out. We'll repost.
Uh, all, right, all right, guys. Thank you guys so much for the time. We appreciate it. Yes. And we hope to run into you guys at some other point. See you in St. Sure. Pete. Yeah, thanks, guys. Come on down. Appreciate, it. Great so appreciate it. Thank you, guys. See you guys. Have a good one. Okay, they got off. <laughs>